Hey everybody, Spencer and Alex here from VFC, and we are out on the river today in the middle of winter, which I would hope is obvious given that there is snow around us, and Burr. Alex is a little shivery over here. But why are we out here on the river today, Alex? Well, there's midges hatching, dry fly fishing, yes. potentially. And uh, we just wanted to show you guys a few tips, a few strategies, some tactics for going out on the river during the winter. We're gonna rig up with you. We're gonna show you what we're using and what kind of water we're targeting. So during the winter, I'm looking for high calorie food items that are actually gonna get fish to eat because it's cold, their metabolism slows down. They're not really looking to eat a whole bunch, to move a whole lot. Uh, so you gotta give them something enticing. Yeah, so that's why the scud that I fish is pretty big for that reason. Uh, but then we have seen some midges hatching, so we know that there is bug activity going on. So that's why I'm gonna throw that midge on uh, the bottom. Another good option would be like a worm, like a waltz worm, a San Juan worm, a wire worm. You mean like this? Yeah. <laughs> or a mop fly? Yeah. Uh, would be another good option, but again, I'm just... I'm going straight junk fly today. Yep. I got weighted San Juan worm, and then I got an egg pattern, so... Boom. That's all you need. Yeah. I am going to put one tiny split shot on to start, just because I know this run that we're fishing. And I just realized my leader is super short, so that's yeah. cool. Somebody gets to tie on a new leader while somebody else is out fishing. <sighs> hey, can I have an indicator? <laughs> <laughs> Which spot do you want, up or down? What do you want? Well, I mean, I, I was just gonna go like right here. Rock, paper, scissors? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Is it best out of three or? I mean, <laughs> I'm still gonna go there, so. Go, I'll fish down. <laughs> All right, Spencer's working the top of the run. I'm gonna head down here. There's a very subtle seam here, and I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, but there's a very subtle little seam right here, uh, kind of in between the fast and slow, and I've hooked into quite a few fish in, in this spot before, so we'll see, we'll see what happens today. You know, for being the middle of winter, it's actually a pretty nice day. All right, so here we've got a nice little shelf. It's pretty shallow for a minute and then it just drops off. This is a pretty good spot for fish during the winter. You're looking for that slow, deeper water. The takes, again, are really soft in the winter. So you really do want to set on just about everything. You know, fish are kind of lazy. They want to conserve their energy. And I mean, I'll give them a break. There's not very much food during the winter, so they can't really eat a lot of food, which helps with energy, right? At least that's what I tell myself when I'm eating food. But there's not a lot of food out, so the next best thing they can do is kind of just hunker down for the winter. So slow, deep moving water, slow, deep moving. Deep, slow moving water is probably gonna be your best bet this time of year. I might need to add some more weight or even adjust my indicator. I don't know if I'm getting down far enough. I'm not, not quite ticking the bottom like I'd expect to be. But we'll give this a few more runs before I Before I adjust, I have to remind myself to be patient a lot. Oh. Got that indicator. Can I give a little mend? Make sure I have that drag free drift. Oh. 
That's bottom, so that's good. I'm getting to the bottom. Because again, winter, fish are probably hanging out near the bottom, conserving energy. So, just gonna keep working this slower water. Oh, that's a fish. Fish on! Alex is already hooked up. Look at that. Woohoo! Good work, Whitey. Uh, no, I think it's a trout. What it eat? The egg. Of course it did. Alex is cheating over here using salmon roe. <laughs> nice little brownie. Good work. Look at that. Yep, took the egg. There's bottom, so now I know. All right, so my indicator just ticked. Uh, I just moved it and added a couple more split shot than what I originally had because I thought that was gonna be heavy enough to get down, but it wasn't. And Alex caught his fish right on the bottom, so that's about where I need to be. Even though there are some fish rising and doing rising fish things, majority of the fish are most likely gonna be kinda tucked tuck down, tuck out of the way a little bit. Oh! I just saw a big one smack a midge on top of the water out there. I know they're in there. Ooh! Maybe he wants an egg. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cast it ahead of him because if I were to cast right where he's at, it's probably gonna spook him. So I just cast a little bit ahead of him. I don't think I'm far enough right there. I didn't cast it far enough out. I was, I was ahead of him, but it wasn't far enough. So as I end this cast, I'm actually gonna let some line out. I'm gonna do a water load down here and then I'm gonna fling it right up to where he was. That was a good fish. I'm catching all the moss right here. I'm probably, I'm, a, I'm getting close to the right depth over there, but I am not quite to the right depth up here where the water's quicker. Now generally, you don't fish these super quick riffles um, in the winter. Just about a walk, walking speed. Oh, there we go. Alex, Alex is hooked into something. <laughs> that was moss. Never mind. He caught the elusive moss fish. But no, the reason this spot's great is because it's about that perfect walking speed water, which you really want. But then it drops off where Alex is standing down there. There's a huge shelf and it drops off deep. It might pay off to cast it a little bit further up. That will give my flies more time to sink before it gets right here into this money spot, right after that ledge. So, oh, another one just rose out there. There's a fish. Fish on. This feels like a better one. So Alex hooked up again, and I, I hope it's a big white fish because he loves white fish more than he would rather catch a hundred white fish than one trout. He loves them that much. Oh, uh, I think it is a big old white fish. Big though. Come here, little fella. Hey, Alex, you want to swap spots? Come here, little fella. I mean, you wanted that one, so I'll be gracious. You can have it. You need my help with the net? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, this is why you always bring a buddy. Because <laughs> Alex, this is not a dig at you, but I don't know if you could land this one on your own. I, it, he, every time he sees us, he just 
runs. Yeah, this is one of those fish, like Alex certainly could land it on his own. I'm not being facetious, <laughs> but it's one of those fish that's immeasurably easier to land well, yeah. when you've got a buddy. And especially because my leader's so long, right? Like that indicator is gonna hit the tip of my rod. Yeah. And so I got, I have to reach like 10 feet in yep. order to net the fish, which is difficult. And this thing is not small. He is, he is chunky. He ate the egg. Oh, well, man. I think I might have to snag an egg. Yeah. All right, if you can get his head I'm up, trying, I'm not man. even gonna get close. He, he just keeps- Bulldogging. Bulldogging and going straight to the bottom. That's what the big ones do. Yeah. All right. And yep, try to lift his head and he goes straight back down. Oh, same thing. All right. We want to try moving him into shallower water. Yeah, probably. I'll just keep, I'll just keep going this way. Okay. I mean, he's gonna throw a fit, but. Yeah. He's getting tired though. Yeah. That's a good fish right there. That's a really good fish. Oh, Whoa. baby! Holy crap. That thing is fat. <laughs> Woo! That thing puts me to shame. <laughs> I thought I was fat. <laughs> Holy cow. Got a fish. Okay. Yep. That was one of those real subtle eats. A really subtle eat. I didn't even, I thought it was bottom. Good one. Um. It's hard to tell. I mean, if he's going this hard, it's usually a good one. Yeah. Oh! Oh, that was a big one. <sighs> one question we get all the time is, how do you cast heavy nymph rigs? And something I do is I just, roll cast it behind me let it all straighten out let that water load it and then i just fling it forward it's honestly a really easy way to cast these heavy rigs because i got i got my indicator on there i got two big old tungsten bead flies so this ain't no size 22 midge Trying to extend that drift as much as possible. Oh, that's a fish. Oh yeah. See that right at the end of the drift? I just kept it going. So one of the benefits of fishing with a buddy is you can try different rigs, see what the fish are hitting on. And then when you figure it out, you switch over to that. So I ended up switching over to an egg uh, pattern, just like what Alex has on. And then I'm drifting it through here, trying to re trying to redeem myself from the near miss that I had. Or it was. It's kind of my fly fishing life encapsulated right there. Almost good enough, but not quite. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to work the same. This is the same water where I hooked into that other fish. Um, so I'm just hoping that there's. Uh, we know there's more in there. It's just. Are they hungry? And is my presentation good enough? All right, so if I think I'm not getting to the bottom, what are my options? Number one, we already talked about this. I can cast further ahead, give it more time to sink. Number two, I can add heavier flies. Number three, I can move my indicator. And number four, I can add split shot, which is my last resort because just, oh, that's a fish right at the end of the drift. Uh, 
Uh, it does not feel like a whitefish. Oh. But it might be. Because these whitefish fight hard. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. A little head shake action going on. Oh, that is a big old brown. Holy sh... Oh, dude fish. So Alex just hooked into what we call the oh, dude fish. It's the one where you yell real loud because it's a big one. Oh, he is not happy. Oh, he is not happy at all. You know, it's probably the one I lost. Yeah, maybe. I'm I tired it out for you. Oh, perfect. Yeah. No, it's a good fish. He's coming over this way. Yep. Holy. He's right here. He's, he's tired. Oh. Come here, little guy. He's coming. Oh, he's tired. He's tired. Oh, oh my gosh. That's a beautiful brownie. <laughs> Nice work. <laughs> Holy crap. That, that's a trout and a half. Woo. Two epic fish. How many is that? Four? Four to zero? Mm-hmm. Yikes. How do you feel about that? I'm working on it. <laughs> Tell you what. I'll be such a nice guy. Karma's a biatch, but I'll let you take the lower hole. You know what? I don't want your hole, Alex. <laughs> I'll catch fish on my own. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Here's one of my favorite methods on these big rivers. Oh, Spence dog's got one. Let's go. Let's go. Feels like a whitey. I don't think that's fighting like a whitey though. You can see know. those head shakes. I used to make fun of the guys that did this side pressure thing on the fish, because, but it really makes a difference. Like, I don't know why I used to make fun of them. Like, I, I don't know. It really, it, it allows you to access that lower portion of the rod and just, because if you just keep your tip just straight up, all the, that's a whitey. All that happens. Oh, that doesn't count. Okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> if you keep your rod just straight up, you're really only using the tip to fight it. When you when you add the side pressure like this is when you're really able to access all the beef in the lower part of the blanks. Dude, that drag is set fairly decent. Whatever it is is unhappy. Or did you see it? I, I saw a flash, that's all I saw. Oh, and so you don't know if it's a whitey. It feels and is acting like a whitey, but... I feel like it's acting like a trout, man. Nothing's not coming easy. Well, the big white fish don't either. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I kind of thought mine was a white fish, and then... Oh, no, that's a rainbow. Nice. Yeah, it ate the egg. Oh, yeah. Not as big as yours, but it's a good fish. Heads up. No, oh, there we go. I'm on the board. Woo! No more skunk. Thank goodness. <laughs> Did you have fun today, Spencer? I had a blast, Alex. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, just getting out here, cold winter day. Wasn't even that cold, really. Yeah, it really wasn't. Felt, felt pretty mean, nice. If you can get out and it's like, what, 30 plus on a sunny day without wind, I don't yeah. even feel like it's that bad. And hopefully this serves as like proof of concept that, you know, I can talk about it on the podcast or you can read about it, but you actually can get out there in the middle of winter and catch some fish. So yeah. until next time, everybody. Until next time, that was fun. Yeah, have a good one. Tie lines. <laughs>